Hello, how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to look at a 2012 Nissan Rogue. This Rogue has a communications bus failure. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a scan tool and connect it to the DLC, the diagnostic link connector, so we can get into the bus system to see who we can talk to and who we cannot talk to. That'll give us a much better idea of how to proceed. So let's go ahead and get that scan tool connected. We've connected an OE scan tool, Consult 3, to the vehicle. We've selected that it's a Rogue and it's a 2000 model. So let's go down here and we're going to hit select. We're going to confirm it. It's going to go out on the bus now and it's querying the bus. It's looking for the data on the bus to see which modules it can communicate and which modules it cannot communicate to. This is always really important to understand where the problem lies. We're almost there. Okay, so we've got communications, and what this tells me is I have no communications with any module on the CAN circuit. CAN is down. Now that's a problem. I want you guys to notice over here where it can talk to the ABS module. Always be very careful when you look at these. This ABS module has a K line that goes to it. So the scan tool can connect to that module off the bus. It's using a separate communications line to that module. That's not communicating on the CAN bus. The CAN is totally failed. Always look at the wiring diagrams and know how it's wired. Know if there's back doors into the module. If I can get in or if I can't through some other means, another diagnostic communication system. In this case, we know the CAN's down. So let's go up and we're going to run this uh, we're going to pick CAN and we're going to try to get it to help us diagnose it. Well, all it's got is a question mark. I believe that that's why we're here to diagnose the car because there's a question. The scan tool has done absolutely nothing to help me fix this vehicle. What you're going to need to do is have an oscilloscope and connect the oscilloscope into the bus network. Let's go ahead and take care of that. Since the CAN network is down, the fan is running on high. That's a default, so we can not overheat the car. First thing I want to do is I want to put my charger on. So I want to keep the battery alive while we're working on this vehicle. So I'm going to go ahead and put a charger on and keep the battery up. Now what we want to do is put a breakout box on the DLC and connect our oscilloscope. So let's go ahead and take care of that. We've connected the breakout box to the vehicle and I've got my scope ready to connect to the breakout box. Now a lot of people would take the ground and use one of these positions, four or five. I want my ground cable at the negative battery. That way I can't have a voltage drop that's hidden from me. So this needs to be connected to the battery negative and then I'm going to come and connect to 6 and 14 for my CAN high and CAN low. So let's go ahead and connect to the battery. Now we need to connect the oscilloscope into the vehicle. We're going to use a breakout box. A breakout box goes between the scan tool and the DLC. On this vehicle, the DLC is directly connected into the bus lines. On this, we're going to take channel 1 and we're going to connect it to CAN high on pin 6 and we're going to take channel 2 and connect it in to CAN low on pin 14. Now we're connected on here. Now is what we want to do is we want to activate the bus. So right now the bus is off. I want to activate it by putting the key into the ignition. Now as soon as I put the key into the ignition, you can see the bus becomes active. We start to have communication packets. Let me go to a full screen so we can better see this. Do you see how much bigger the yellow or CAN high is compared to the CAN low? I also want you to notice that the bus idle or the recessive bus state, which would be the bias voltage on this, is about 1.9. So that's telling me I'm in accessory mode. The bus is not fully active. 
When the bus will become active on this car is when I turn the ignition key on and then this line will go to 2.5 and we'll have full bus communications. When we have a bus in what I refer to as an accessory mode, some cars have this and some don't guys. So when you put the key in, it goes into an accessory mode, it wakes the bus up and everybody's ready to work now. When I turn the key on, I go to fully active mode. Now sometimes I have to put the key in and then go to an accessory mode and then we get this mode. Other cars, as soon as it sees the key, it's in fully active mode. So about 1.8 to 2 volts is an accessory mode. 1.7 is usually where I'm going to sleep on the bus state. And once I turn the key and it goes to 2.5, I'm fully active, okay? On some cars, when you turn the key, and it doesn't go fully active, but it stays at this state, which means that I'm not powering all the modules right, they're not fully woken up, I can get that because I have a power problem to some of the modules. What's really wild is a lot of times I see this and I can talk to the transmission controller, but I can't talk to anybody else. So that's just some of the cars that I've seen, and it's an idea. So in this case, we want to go ahead and we want to turn the key on. Now when we turn the key on, we saw go active, and now we're railing those bus lines. Now when the bus goes to 2.5, or 3.5, and 1.5, it started at 2.5 and it went up to 3.5, well that's can high. When it pulled down to 1.5, that's can low. Those are the dominant bit positions, but now they're staying there. Is what this is telling me is we have some type of a problem with a CAN transceiver. So one of the modules on this bus, the CAN transceiver is pulling the lines high and low. Remember the CAN transceiver is what its job is, is he's going to be the one that's going to control the bus lines. He's going to put the bus voltage state on there and they're going to also watch the arbitration and so forth with the messaging to understand who wins arbitration, who doesn't, who becomes a listener, who gets to transmit. All that's handled by the CAN transceiver. But one of the high speed modules on this car is bad. So really one of the first things that we're going to need to do is we need to get a wiring done diagram so we can understand which module that is. So if we get a wiring diagram up we can see that first off we've got the DLC and the DLC came down and see how the DLC goes directly into the lines and splits off? If these DLC lines go and they go into another module that module becomes the bridge. The bridge is the unit that takes the high speed, medium speed, and low speed, and I can transmit from the bridge, or it bridges the communications across. You can't have low speed communications on a high speed network. The bridge allows me to bridge the data across at different speed rates in any of the communication protocol. This car just goes to high speed, so that I know that. That's a real advantage for me. Now I need to understand what modules I have. I have an ECM, I have an ABS, a TCM, I have the airbag, I have the body control, here I have the EPS, I have a steering angle sensor, I have the intelligent power distribution module, I don't have all wheel drive so I don't have that, I don't have an intelligent key so I don't have that and I have the combination meter or the instrument panel. Now guys, I've been out to look at this car four times and it hasn't done it. One time it started to do it, I turned the key and I cycled it back on and the car was fixed. So I'm scared to turn the key on and off again, so I'm going to leave the key on and now what I want to do is I want to go and unplug each module and as I unplug the module I'm going to check the scope. When I unplug the correct module, the waveform will come back. Right now this waveform is being held high and low by one of the CAN transceivers. So let's go ahead and take a look at what modules are the easy ones to get to and then we'll work our way to the harder modules as we progress through this. So let's go ahead and take a look at the modules. The first module that we're going to get to is the ECM. He's right up front. It's real easy. Let's go ahead and do him.
no change on the scope. So that's not the module. So we want to plug this one back together. Don't take all the modules loose. If you take them all loose, the bus will start to ring because you will have lost your termination resistance. So we want to pop each module apart and then put that module back together. The next module that we want to do is the TCM. It's real easy, it's right here. No change on the scope. So this isn't the module. This is the power distribution. You can see the pink and blue twisted pair. So we want to disconnect this connector. And we can see that when we did that, no change on the scope. This isn't the module. The ABS module being very easy to get to is the next one. I've unplugged it and we still have no change. The wiring colors don't match with the blue and pink wire on this Nissan. So I've unplugged all of the connectors to the combination switch and inside the combination switch is the steering angle sensor. I still have no change on the scope. The next module that was easy to get to is the combination meter, the instrument panel. I want to unplug it. We've got it unplugged. I also want to note that in this there's no pink and blue wires for comm lines. We'll just unplug the whole thing and we still have no change on the scope. So that's not the right module either. The next module that we're going to disconnect is the BCM. It was up behind the glove box. It's disconnected, but there's no change on the oscilloscope. So this isn't the right module either. Okay guys, the last module on this bus is this SRS module. It's the hardest one to get to, obviously. It's under the center council. So let's uh, get the communication wires off. There it is, the fan stopped running and the scope popped up. This module is bad, guys. This is the one that's gonna need to be replaced to fix this can problem. Very intermittent problem. Okay, guys, we fixed the car. We know which module it is, it's the SRS. I wanna show you another technique that I use a lot. Sometimes the modules are really hard to get to and they're up in the dash and I don't want to disassemble the whole dash. So what I want to do is I want to look at a wiring diagram and find which fuse powers which modules. Then I want to pull that fuse or fuses that power that module. Now I got to warn you, since the CAN transceiver is a hard component and those wires are wired on and they're wired to that CAN transceiver, you're not disconnecting that. If that CAN transceiver is pulling those down, the power isn't going to make any difference. So I've had cars where I've had modules create waveform problems and I take the power away and I can't see it. The sure way is to disconnect it, but I can show you another way that's very effective as well, and that's pulling fuses. Let me show you. We pulled the fuse to the SRS module and I can see that the bus has become active. So now I would know that that fuse went to the SRS and I could associate that my SRS module has a problem. But after I've been here four times to try to see this problem, I can't take a chance. If I can get to the modules, I'm going to get to them and I'm going to unplug them. That way I'm absolutely positive that we found the correct module. 
so hopefully you can see now that these CAN communication problems, they're not that hard. I do a lot of COM problems during the week. Some of them can be really difficult. Most of them aren't that bad. The hardest part I have is when I show up at the shop, is the car going to have the problem or not? If I don't have the communication problem present, I can't diagnose it. It'd be sort of like if we went out to diagnose a no start and the car starts every time. You're not going to be able to find it. So COM problems are no different. They have to be present so I can figure out where my problem is. Always follow a, a plan. Think through. Step by step. Don't jump steps. Stay on target. And if you do this, you'll be, you'll be successful with these communication style problems. Good troubleshooting in your base.